Welcome to segment seven, effective collaboration to meet the patient's needs. In the last segment, we had an opportunity to listen in on the ACE team rounds and hear from the team about some of the challenges they face in working together. In this segment, we're gonna focus on the principles for effective team-based care and spend some time speaking to the team members of the ACE unit at San Francisco General Hospital to illustrate these principles. There's been a fair amount of research on what makes for effective team-based healthcare. The Institute of Medicine convened an expert panel that reviewed the body of evidence in an attempt to really identify some of the core principles for effective teamwork. We're gonna discuss each of these in more detail. They are shared goals, mutual trust, clear roles amongst team members, an effective communication structure, and measurable processes and outcomes. Teams have shared goals, and the team must work with the patient, family members, and caregivers to ensure that these goals reflect their priorities. The goals have to be clearly articulated, understood, and supported by all the members of the team in order to meet the patient's needs. Let's hear from Dr. Edgar Pierluisi, the medical director of the ACE unit, how the ACE team works with patients and their families to establish shared goals. We do that by talking with patients and families about what their aims are for the hospitalization and what they hope to see happen afterwards. We try to achieve that again by maintaining function as best we can, as many patients want to go back home and have things be as they were before. And many times that's possible and sometimes it isn't. In both cases, we work with the patients and families to create a care plan that, uh, that's acceptable to them and, and tries to achieve those, those aims. Clear expectations need to be set for each team member's functions, responsibilities, and accountabilities. These have to take into account the discipline-specific expertise that each member has, what their skills are, and their interests. Clear roles are critical in order to optimize the team's efficiency and to enable them to divide tasks and accomplish more as a team than they would as individual members. And while clear roles and responsibilities are important, team members also have to be flexible in adapting when the need arises, such as if a team member is absent or the team membership changes. Let's hear from several members on the ACE team about their role. I am a geriatric social worker for here at San Francisco General Hospital. And my role is to help with discharge planning from the moment that the patient is admitted into the hospital onto our floor till they go home. And so I have to work with the team and figure out what they were doing before they came into the hospital, what's going on with them now, and what their needs are gonna be when they leave. And everything in between. Uh, on the ACE team, I act as the Real Rehabilitation Department Liaison. And so I represent uh, physical speech and occupational therapy and um, help assist in the nurses determining what the precautions um, may be that they are finding clavicle fractures, sternal precautions, hip precautions, those kinds of things, and helping explain those to the nurses. Um, and then I also represent um, what the therapists that are working with the ACE patients are finding and back to the team. My name is Nam. I'm the pharmacist on the geriatric team. And uh, my role is basically to make sure that the meds don't interact with each other. Um, in the geriatric population, I definitely make sure that they're geriatric friendly, so safe to use in geriatric patients. The dosing in geriatric patients are a little bit different, um, so I make sure that that happens. And um, I pretty much bring up issues. Um, for instance, um, certain meds should not be crushed, so I let the nurse know since she's right there doing the rounds. So those are some of the things that I do. A core function of a high-performing team is to ensure that consistent, clear, professional communication happens amongst team members. 
Effective communication includes the capacity to listen actively and to be attentive and observant. The ability to understand both the situation and the message. The confidence to be sure of your message and to be convincing in relaying your message to others. And finally, the ability to ask or tell someone to do something without evoking negative emotions on either side. We're going to talk more about communication strategies and tools in the upcoming module. We saw the San Francisco General Hospital ACE team in their rounds during the last segment. Let's hear more from the team about their communication strategies and how they work together. We have a very collaborative model that we use, so everyone assesses the patient according to their own background and expertise, and then we come together as a team for ACE rounds and we give our recommendations based on our assessment and um, and what we talk to the nurse about and what they present during rounds. I think we do a really good job of working together. We stay in communication. Um, we round on the patients in the mornings. We each take our turn. We have our, um, our time limit uh, rounds, which I guess you'll see. But um, we each have our part and we contribute and then we work together and check in with each other and we try to communicate with the team. And it's, it's all about communication, really and staying in communication throughout the day. Team members must earn each other's trust in order to allow them to rely on each other both personally and professionally. A critical element of trust is being able to understand and respect the rules and culture of the team. One key factor in establishing trust is ensuring that all voices on the team are heard equally without regard to position or seniority so that any member feels safe voicing concerns or ideas. In addition, there must be a process or mechanism in the team to address breaches in trust when they do occur. Finally, teams must have measurable processes and outcomes. The team should agree on a mechanism for reliable and timely feedback on both the successes and the failures of the team. This should include examining both the functioning or process of the team and also the outcomes of the team and whether they're achieving their goals. Feedback should be used both immediately and in the long term to improve team performance. Let's hear from one of the ACE team members on the processes they have in place to review the outcomes of their program and respond to feedback. And the steering committee meeting we have once a month and then we talk about um, how the program is going and if we have any ideas for a new um, development, program development, for example, and we're evaluating um, how effective the team is and how the program itself is working. And we have other specialties there that are not always at the... Um, at the ACE rounds. In summary, there are five key principles to effective team-based care. Shared goals, mutual trust, clear roles, effective communication strategies, and measurable processes and outcomes. We've talked a lot about the benefits of team care for patients in early segments. Let's hear from ACE team members about how their team approach to care benefits the patients they care for. I think it's really great because we take into account all the aspects of the patient's health, the physical and mental, emotional, spiritual, and everyone um, has you know, their area of expertise, so it becomes like a very well-rounded um, sort of view of the patient that incorporates all the different aspects of their health status, and I think that is really benefits the patient in the end. And also, I think for the bedside nurse, I think she really gets a good view of what's going on with the patient. And I think in that way, she actually can give much better care and it empowers the nurse with, with knowledge um, and feels that she's part of the decision-making process a little bit more, I think, in the care. And also the patient, of course, we do spend a lot of time talking to the patient, which I think when the team's around, there's very little time to actually talk to the patient. 
but we have that extra time to spend with the patient and get their um, opinion of what's going on and even telling them sometimes about the plan of care because sometimes they get left out of the loop a little bit so and they feel that they're being heard because we're actually sitting down and talking to them a little more so that really I think it's great for the patient. I think it's the only way that the patient gets the care they deserve. Um, I, I, I hope that one day that that communication is there and that the national patient safety goal no longer needs to be one because it just happens of increasing communication amongst caregivers. I feel like in every hospital and with almost every patient, the person that finds out sometimes the last about what's happening is the patient in the bed. And I feel like if we all work together, we can provide one uh, line of, of maybe a direction into how to get from the hospital back to their home or back to the safest discharge plan by all being on the same page and working together for that common goal. What about the benefits of working on a team for team members? Let's hear from some of the ACE team members about the benefits they perceive from working in a team. Well, it's extremely gratifying to me personally to be a part of a team that creates a well-crafted care plan for patients. Again, providing the best care is what we aim to do every day, and I think this team helps, helps to do that. I think second, the team is a learning team. So I love learning together with our team. We have lots of questions that come up during rounds, and together we help to, we, we learn. And the last thing is, I think in the moment, having that team structure, I feel smarter. I feel like uh, frequently somebody will say something and I'll think of something that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise that is important and that helps to, helps to help that patient recover. I gain a lot of knowledge that I wouldn't normally have access to. I've learned a lot about medications um, that I can question with some degree with the uh, teams that aren't maybe on the ACE unit or maybe not even in this hospital, but it increases my own knowledge base. You know, from working on an interprofessional team, I feel I learn a lot from the other professions. Um, for instance, um, f from the op occupational therapist, I learned that for certain hip fractures, you can't sit up at 90 degrees after the operation room. And so some of my medications, after you swallow the medication, you need to be sitting upright for 30 minutes. And, and so I learned that. In this segment, we learned about the five core principles for effective team care. Shared goals, mutual trust, clear roles, effective communication, and measurable processes and outcomes. We also had the opportunity to hear from members of the ACE unit about the benefits of team care for both patients and providers. Now let's check your understanding. Which of the following elements is not key for effective team-based care? Shared goals, clear roles, mutual trust, hierarchical structure. That's right, D is the correct answer. A hierarchical structure is not a key element of team-based care. Thanks for joining us for module one. We hope that you've had an opportunity to have an introduction to what interprofessional collaboration means and the different forms that interprofessional collaboration can take as well as some of the benefits of interprofessional collaboration for patients, families, and for the healthcare system. I want to acknowledge the contributors to Module 1 seen in this slide. We had students, faculty, and healthcare professionals from UCSF who all contributed to this module. In the upcoming module, you'll hear about the roles, responsibilities, and abilities of different healthcare professionals from Dr. Susan Hyde.